I promised you guys a video. I've put out a couple different heating methods and I know some of you want to see just how they work. So I've got a couple demonstrations today. Put on your seat belts. We're going to find out what these things are capable of. Again, if you're a returning subscriber, please start this video off with a like. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. We got crazy amount of tips coming up. Here we go. Okay, so I didn't want to do this inside, right? Because inside right now, we're in a comfortable setting. Uh, everything's warm. I know this is a prep to like emergency preparedness, but I wanted to do this in real life situation because this is to keep you warm. This is to cook your food. So I want it to be in the cold. So I'm out here in the barn. You can see my breath. It's cold. So we're gonna see how these things perform in the cold. As you can see, the thermometer behind me says 40, 41. And I'll take you right out here and show you just exactly what I mean when I say cold. This has been frozen all day long, frozen over. Okay, so for starters, we've got the Crisco running in that little metal utensil holder that I showed you in the, our other video. Wait a minute, that reminds me. If you're new to this channel, you need to go back and watch the other couple videos. I'll leave links in the description below. There'll also be links at the end of this video. Be sure to go watch those before, this is, the, this is part two. Okay, so back to this. This is a glass mason jar, canning jar, that I filled with Crisco. It's got one wick, it's burning. We've got two cups of water. See how we're looking here. We got two cups of water, so the lid's warm. Um, I don't see any bubbles yet, but I'm keeping track of the time. We're gonna find out how long that takes to warm up. If uh, we need to wrap it with some foil to contain some of the heat. Um, we've also got the little Arizona penny can stove. This cool little thing right here, I bought it at the dollar store. I don't even know what it's used for. It's some type of thing to maybe hold some fruit. I don't know. But I saw that it was metal and I saw that it would hold a pot. And I was like, huh, that's perfect. A dollar. And if you were wondering what this is, this is a titanium little kettle. Uh, you can find it at REI. I'll leave a link down in the description for something like that. Uh, super lightweight for backpacking. Had that in my gear, so I went and grabbed that. This is just a hodgepodge of like Walmart styled uh, pot and pan sets. I don't even think those two things go together. So um, we'll put that on top of the Arizona penny can stove and see how well that works. And I went ahead and grabbed a few items out of our prepper pantry. We've obviously got some mountain house. Those are dehydrated meals that you can pick up just about anywhere now. They were intended for like backpacking, hiking up in the mountains, lightweight food source. All they take is water and you have an instant meal. And I've ate them many times. And when I'm up in the middle of the mountains, they are delicious. Also, we've got just some canned goods and I picked up these canned goods from the Dollar Tree. I'm trying to show you guys that you can do this prepping stuff and preparedness stuff on a budget. And you can see I've got just a little cup back there of oatmeal. A lot of things out there that all you need to do is add hot water. So that's what we're going to work on today. Just having super simple ways to eat by just heating water. Okay. We're using cold water, cold water out here. Got to be realistic. Okay, so there we go. I just put ice cold water uh, right above the Arizona penny can stove. Um, if you don't have a lid, make a lid out of foil. We're trying to conserve heat. And if you don't have a pot, use a soup can. Uh, these ones with the little pull tabs work really great. You don't open them all the way and then you kind of have a little lid that'll hold some of that heat in. Super smart. And also if you're, if you're worried about Crisco going into the jars and the jars breaking, which in an emergency situation, they're not gonna break. It's gonna be cold out. You're, vegetable shortening Crisco isn't even going to melt on the outside. It's just going to melt right around the wick. But if you're if you're concerned about that, put it in a metal can. So there we go. You can see the little Arizona penny can stove is working on this guy. And you can see that the Crisco over there is working on that one. So I wanted to show you guys these little things. 
These little jars you can pick up at the Dollar Tree with these sweet little handles. Then you've got something that you can carry around through the house, you know, and do whatever you need to do. Also, you can hook a little wire to this and suspend it off a screw. Keep it plenty far away from your ceiling or whatever is around it. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. Put my finger in here. It has went from, it's went from super ice cold to where I cannot hold my finger in it. Over here, above the Crisco. This has been running for about 10 minutes and it's lukewarm. Also, I had some people ask about wicks. You can make them out of anything cotton, uh, cotton shoestring. You can buy little wicks like this uh, from just about anywhere. Walmart carries them. On oil type ones or ones where your wick's gonna dip down and possibly go out, you can pick up a little wire like this. This is from Dollar Tree. And you can spiral that wire around the shoestring or whatever you're gonna use for a wick and then tee it off at the top wrap it around the top of the jar to keep it upright and liquid. Okay guys, on the penny can stove, five to seven minutes, we had definitely a strong boil going on. I happened to get this can at Dollar Tree. When you cut the top off, use it as a lid, hold in that heat. Let's see how this one's doing. It's definitely hot enough for like tea. We're not boiling yet. So let's see, one thing that we could do is we could wrap it with foil. Okay, so you guys could do something like that. If it's super chilly and in this situation where I've got uh, the flame quite a bit lower than the pot, um, you can insulate the lower part with foil, just wrap it around. Um, there's obviously a lot of spots where it can breathe under there, but it's going to trap a lot of that heat. Same thing with this one. If you're going to be conserving heat, then you're going to need to wrap this lower end, uh, allow a little bit of air so it can breathe, but trap that heat. It's going to cut down on the time that it takes to cook. Okay, so the penny can stove is a super win for cooking food for warming up stuff. Uh, you could easily fry on that thing. You can warm up just about anything. It uh, took, I don't know, not even five, six, seven minutes to warm uh, the soup up. It's definitely hot. And you can still see that little guy cooking. It's still going. You guys are in an emergency situation and it's cold much like uh, when I'm up backpacking in the middle of nowhere, you've been cold all day and you get some fire or some warmth or eat some warm food and it definitely changes the morale of the feeling that you're in, whether it's emergency or way in the heck out there and cold and just having something warm will bring up your spirits a lot. So having these tools, super important. Even if you don't use them, you don't feel like you're going to use them, have them in a tote, a tub, somewhere in the garage. Know that you've got that backup for if anything crazy happens. Some of the stuff that I was shopping for, I was in the stores and there was empty shelves already. Now it's going to make a lot more sense if you have propane and propane operated things. But this is a backup plan to the backup plan. I don't know if you all have noticed, but propane is skyrocketing in price right now. And when that propane runs out, or you can't start a fire and show other people that you have a fire and you're warm when everyone else is, I mean, it might be best that you don't have a fire because people are gonna know if you have a fire. And if you're trying to survive and you're the only person on the block that's got some warmth and hot food, you can imagine what's gonna happen. I know some of you don't like hearing it like that, but the reality is, you gotta be prepared for what you can be prepared for. Okay, everyone, so the moral of the story on this, on this style of warming up water with the Crisco, one candle, you're only gonna be warming up water. Like, it can get hot, hot to the touch, but 
much more than that with this type of system right here. To get more heat, we would need to add more flame, more wicks, more candles, get it closer to the flame, and it would probably work a lot better. As for now, we'll have some hot tea. So a few people mentioned in the comments about adding essential oils. This is kind of the system I thought up of, of adding essential oils. You would go and you take the bottom of the tray, flip it upside down, add a little bit of water in that, and then take your essential oils and put it right in the top. Just like so that way you've got a little basin on top it's constantly heated it's going to put off that essential oil into the air and it's going to make you feel real comfortable okay and for all you folks who asked how long does the penny can last well i filled this guy all the way up this is the arizona style penny can stove and it lasted me right now 25 to 30 minutes impressive that's an impressive amount of cook time out of this little bad boy. Here's another style of doing this little metal arrangement, adding foil to the outside. It'll cut down on draft. It'll also hold in a little bit of heat. That's the Crisco candle. You can see how it's burning. I know some of you wanted to see how it looks after it burns. This is the style with a candle in the middle. It's just going to town. That's about how it looks in the cold. Don't have to worry about the glass. It just melts right around the wick like that. This has been burning for about 40 minutes to an hour. This is how you do, you cook with no power. This is how you get light with no power. Mm. <laughs> Be ready. <laughs> All right, everyone. There was the test. The penny can stove, definitely a great way to cook. The Crisco candles with one wick, all you're going to be doing is warming up water, tea, warm water stuff. You're going to have to get really creative to boil a little bit of water on that in a cold environment. Okay, and also with the 72 day burn time Crisco style light or heater, it's going to put off light and a decent amount of heat. But when I say it puts off heat, you're not going to be heating up a big old room. You're going to heat up a small space. And in an emergency situation, you want to set up a tent in your living room safely. Wrap it with blankets, have a little bit of ventilation. Again, safety first. If you can't do it safely, then, then pick another option. But you want to heat a small room, a bathroom, a closet, something small. I've had a lot of people comment that they put numerous ones in a medium sized room and it kept the room at a comfortable level. They slept at night through emergency situations. We're going to go into tough winters. Power's going to go out. We're not going to have electricity. You guys need to be prepared on how you're going to cook your food, how you're going to stay warm, and how you're going to have light when the batteries run out and the propane runs out. I love making helpful videos for everyone, so please comment. I read through most of the comments. I'm sorry if I can't get to all of you. I try, but I will continue making great videos, helpful tips for you all. We'll see you guys on the next one. Anybody want any spicy noodles? <laughs>